Yo up guys, how's it going? Kermode here. It's been a while since I've done a tutorial, so I'm glad to be back. I'm going to get straight into it today. We're going to be going over super saws, and I'm actually going to give you five tips on making better super saws. Now, the reason I had this idea is I just released a new song called Universe off my forthcoming album called Universe, and the chorus sounds like this. <laughs> So let's just dive into our five tips. So tip number one or step number one is you're going to need a really rich chord progression. In my opinion, the most important part of a super saw are the chords. And it's too often that I see people use a single note or maybe like a single note and a fifth and they just try and stack multiple octaves of that. And in my opinion, that's not only just lazy, but it just doesn't achieve a really nice sound. Now for this tip, I'm going to address people that aren't very comfortable with creating chords, which is many of you, including myself. And there's a few different ways that I kind of hack theory sometimes when I'm not in the mood to write it or, or I just want some help. So the first is a tool known as Cthulhu. Cthulhu is a MIDI plugin uh, designed by Xfer, the same guy who does uh, Serum, Steve Duda. And it's both a kind of chord creator as well as an arpeggiator. If I arm it, you can see down here, we're creating chords. Now where this is really interesting for super saws is up here, I turn off the arpeggiator. And then you have all these different chord options uh, within your list. So let's say for example, I want to pick a Bach Chorale. you have all these really nice options and I'm just playing single notes right now. And there are chords applied to each one. So what I do is once I've created a chord progression, I'll then resample that MIDI down to a new track by taking the input from Cthulhu, Cthulhu, done. Now, I'm not gonna use Cthulhu for this because I don't want to assume all of you guys have it since we're doing it in Ableton. I will tell you about one more though outside of Ableton. I haven't tried this yet, but I've had it recommended to me quite a bit and it's Captain Chords. Captain Chords is by the same makers that do Mixed in Key, which is the software I use to analyze my music before I perform. It tells me the key, it tells me the tempo and Captain Chords is a little similar to Cthulhu, but in my opinion, a little more, a little more hands on where you actually pick the chords uh, and it gives you suggestions as to what chords, while Cthulhu is more about just what sounds good to you and it's uh, less about knowing what you're doing. And then what I'm really gonna get into now is kind of how to properly use the MIDI effects in Ableton. So the first thing I do is I either create or use a chord plugin, uh, the chord preset MIDI effect to generate a nice chord sound. So I'm gonna just drop Serum on here so we have a sound to work with. And then I'm going to grab a chord preset. So again, you can either make your own or just grab one. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to grab one. Great, sounds good. Now, at this point, it's not locked to any sort of key. So what I then do is I grab a scale plugin, either the C major, C minor, or one of the other ones if you wanna get creative. And then from there, as you change the bass, you change what key it's in. So E minor, D minor, etc. So now we can get some sort of chord progression going. something like that. I would tweak it to perfection. And then from here, you can do kind of the basics, and I'm not gonna go into the basics of super saws, but it would be like stacking unisons, stacking other octaves, everything you would typically do to get a very 
thick super saw, but with the chord as your bass. <laughs> There, once you have a chord progression that you like, you create a new MIDI channel, you monitor the input from that MIDI channel, you arm it, There you go, you see the MIDI actually drop down there. So now we can toss that back on our Super Saw, take away the MIDI effects, and we've created a nice chord progression. So that's tip number one. Now tip number two here is you're gonna want a clean sub underneath. So what I typically do is I duplicate my instance of Serum. So I have just the chords here. I create either a nice clean sine wave, a nice clean saw, some sort of lower, some sort of simple waveform to go underneath. It's up to you to kind of decide what you like. I usually either do a saw or a sine wave. From there, I create a MIDI pattern out of just certain notes to create my bass line. Now I have two choices. Usually I either go with the bottom notes or the top set of notes. And how I decide that is I fold so I can see a little bit easier and I see where they sit. And I can already tell that the lower notes are gonna be a lot better because we get E, E, G, A, E, E, D, D, versus C, D, E, F, C, D, C, B. And I know that this is gonna sit in a way worse range on uh, club sound systems, because I usually don't like my subs going below an E. D is kind of my lowest, and usually by C, most club systems have kind of rolled off. The volume's not quite as strong with that C, sometimes non-existent, especially on uh, someone's average sound system, like a car or something like that. So I usually, my goal is to have my sub sitting between like E and G, and then maybe the occasional high note might be an A, and the occasional low note might be a D. So this uh, bottom register of notes is perfect. So now I can just kind of deactivate everything. And then I'm gonna use shift up and down with the notes selected to drop it into sub range. Now again, it's up to me to decide if I want it to be a saw, and I'll kind of play it with the original and see what sounds good. I like getting a bit of a buzz from the low end saw. Again, that's just taste. So that's, that's step number two, layer a clean sub underneath it. So my next tip is experiment with layering. Too often I see people make their super saw purely saws and why? Why have the same sound that everyone else does when you can get a lot more creative? So what I like to do is I, I usually duplicate the original so we have the same MIDI, often the same serum preset, and then I like to try out different wavetables and just see what sounds good when you have a different set of harmonics because a saw wave, what a saw wave is, is it's all of the even harmonics, usually in a very even ramp down, the harmonics get quieter and quieter. And it works quite well for super saws because you get a pretty even uh, distribution of the harmonics, but of course it's nice to get unique sounds as well. So I usually go into my own wavetables I have some chill ones that I made when I worked at Cymatics, and I find these, these ones aren't made for like bass sounds, they're made to just be harmonically rich and interesting. So let's test these out. I 
actually quite like this one. It kind of reminds me of a vocal. And then let's try another one for this one that was an octave above. So let's go back into my user wave tables, chill. Um, for some reason, when I updated Serum, everything lost its alphabetical and numerical order. I don't know why. It drives me insane. <laughs> Finding with this one an octave up, I'm just going to stick with a saw. Again, there's no right or wrong way to do it, but I think that sounded best. And then let's bring back that sub saw an octave below. Now, another way I like to experiment with layering is things other than just synthesizers. What I often like to try is things like violins, things like vocals, and see what sounds good. So. When I try this, I usually like to give Contact a shot. And Contact actually has some pretty nice default libraries. Uh, I actually quite like their just basic orchestral strings and testing these out and see how this sounds. And usually what I'll do as well is I'll grab the MIDI effect and I'll grab the Pitch tool because with Shift up and down, we can easily jump in octaves. So I can test out these sounds in multiple octave ranges. quite like that. I like that a lot. The only thing I don't like about it is a little reverby compared to everything else, so I'm going to turn off the reverb. And with all these layers, our master started to push into the red, clipping a bit, so I just highlight everything and turn it down. Now additionally, as a final kind of layering method. If I want to get really fancy, I will also create a top melody where, just similar to what I did with the basses where I deactivated everything but the lows, here I'll, I'll deactivate everything except for the highs. So we have just the top notes. And then I really like trying out more interesting synths like leads. Uh, this is actually where I like to go back into my own presets and try different lead sounds. Kind of this aggressive 8-bit feel. Now one thing I want to do too with all these layers, with our nice clean sub underneath, it is important that we now clear room for it. We should have done that in the previous step, but now more than ever it's really important that we add some sort of EQ and we clear out the range where that sub is existing. <laughs> Let's move on to our next step. So our next step is a one that I personally like to do, but this has more to do with taste. Um, I don't necessarily say you have to do this. No, not that you have to do any of the other steps, but it is nice to get a more creative one. But one thing I find at this stage is our super saw is quite buzzy. The top end of it is quite textured. You can kind of hear 
all the different uh, detuned saws and the lower sub saw, you can hear the texture of the high end. And this is going to be a little harsh on our ears here, but let's just take a listen to this. You know, it's not too, too bad. But typically what I do at this stage is I'll actually group the sub and the highs and I will try and tame the high end in some way, potentially with a dynamic EQ, pro Q. Um, in this case, we'll just use an EQ. We'll kind of round off the top. But then I like to replace this buzzy top end with just some nice pure white noise. So for white noise, you can really use anything. I'd like to try out multiple noise sources, to be honest. So for example, operator can have a nice one, but I, I like to get the lows out of it. And you'll, sorry, you'll have to put it outside the group where the EQ isn't. I also like to make this noise nice and wide. And I personally find this just plain white noise kind of masks the grittiness of the top end because it's just a nice like psh, just like a solid white noise versus a like the texture of saws. Saws are very buzzy. Um, that's taste though. I used to actually really like the buzziness of super saws. Let's move on to our next step. So our last step is setting up a ghost sidechain. The reason for this is if we had a beat like this one here, nothing fancy, I just programmed it for the sake of this demo. What I see a lot of people do is they take their whole super saw and they will side chain it either to the drum bus or to the kick and snare individually. So let's do just that. Let's grab the kick. And although this works, you don't get very much control in terms of how tight you can make it. See, if you try and tighten the release too much, it starts to distort. There's kind of a very specific way you can get it to sound. So what I like to do is create what's known as a dummy sidechain or a ghost sidechain, where you create a track with a very fa fast uh, click sound. So what I'll typically do is I'll take the kick and I'll just pitch it way up. And I'll just pitch it way up. So all we have is a little tiny short click. Now, we're not going to hear this in our song, but this is going to act as the side chain trigger. And because it's so short, it's a lot easier to control the side chain. Plus, you can just take it from one source. So you can get very specific and have a similar pumping feel for both the kick and snare. And where I really like it is you can add it in places where there aren't drums. So it just gives you that extra bit of control that I like that I find you kind of lack when you just straight side chain to the kick and snare. Now there's actually a little bonus tip I wanted to give you guys and this is the tip where now you go to town with effects. Um, now when I say go to town, don't just slap phasers and flangers and things like that, but this is where you can add reverb for vibe or a nice low pass filter if you wanna get into future based territory. So if you wanna uh, use a low pass, this is where you do it. 
I personally much prefer programming the automation of the low pass than using a, an LFO just because I can get more control with feel. And what's really nice about it is actually with the new Ableton 10.1 update, we actually get shapes, which is really nice. So let's say for example, here we wanted a nice LFO shape. You can insert shapes now. And I find introducing at minimum a low pass filter really helps to deal with the high end of super saws that get a little too intense. And what's nice is if the effect is too much for you guys, what you can do is actually throw it in a rack and you can call this the filtered. And then you can put a dry chain underneath and you can just balance their volumes to taste. So at minimum, I suggest bringing down each minus six. So that's halving both their volume, totaling a full volume. And then again, up to you to use some effects. The only thing I recommend is if you apply any effects, make sure to keep your sub nice and pure. So if I do add effects, it's usually on just the high mids uh, and the mids, but no sub. And there you go, guys. Those are all the sort of things that I do when I create a super saw. So again, the first thing, most important, is get your chords right. Chords are most important. Then get a really good bottom end going. Nice sub, be it a saw, sine, triangle, doesn't matter. It has to be nice. It has to sit in the range you want and it plays a good melody. Then I get creative with layering. I try different wavetables. I try different organic sounds like strings and vocals. I try layering a top melody. I do all of these things to kind of make it different than everyone else's super saw. Then from there, I actually tame the high end and I usually replace a bit of it with noise to help smooth things out. A nice wide noise really helps. Lastly, I apply some ghost side chain for feel. And then from there, if I want, I go to town with effects is a nice little bonus tip. So there we go, guys. That's five tips and a little bonus one. So six ways you can improve your super saws. If you like this, go check out my new song, Universe. Support the album. I'm going to be releasing a bunch of tutorials uh, in, co in conjunction with the album, each based off a song. So if you guys like this, all your support means the world. Thanks again. I'm Kermode. Peace.